almost forgot to hit the record. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I went to that little town, and I was so happy to see the cheerful faces of the Canadians in that city. But it wasn't those three towns that I had prayed for. And then the Lord brought me to Brantford. And we had a visitation, and I don't have time to get into it tonight, but there was a visitation in Brantford where I sensed and felt Jesus walk into that church building. I experienced every emotion that you would experience if Jesus physically walked into a meeting. Now, the most beautiful thing about it is we were sitting toward the back. I wasn't even up preaching yet. And I could sense Jesus walking into the building. As soon as I knew that he was standing in the building, the whole entire place erupted on one cue. Nobody said anything to anyone. Just suddenly, it's like the wind went whoosh. And the worship leader began to cry out, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Behold, the bridegroom comes. I sense the Lord walk up the aisle, up to the stage, and sat in a chair that I had set out for him. I invited him in that revival meeting to come and rest in the meeting. I wanted him to rest, to be comfortable. Did you know that he still asks if people want him? But when we set out a chair for him and say, Lord, we want you. He will come in and he will rest. Yes. And I sense the Lord resting in that place. Wow. It was so beautiful that after that night, those Brantford meetings filled up. Word was on the street that God was moving. And it was such a beautiful thing. And we were invited back to come every month for over a year. We went back to Brantford every single month to the healing rooms there. Yes. And we were praying and seeking God for visitation and revival. And we felt that stirring. And I love that season that I was with Charlie and Sue. Yes. It was so beautiful. They became our closest friends. Uh -huh. And we loved them. But the whole time, I was saying, Lord, I'm so thankful for Brantford. But I was praying for St. Thomas. I was praying for London. And I was praying for Port Stanley all these years. Lord, would you open up an opportunity for me to come to those cities? And years later, I was in the living room with Sister Belle. And we had a house meeting. And I was so excited to be there. My wife was with me. She wished that she could have been here, but we were getting ready to be grandparents the second time. And my oldest daughter's getting ready to go into labor. I may get a text message tonight that says she's gone in to labor. And she's down south. And so my wife's getting ready to jump on a plane and go down there as soon as she hears. But I was so excited to be in London. My wife was with me. And I can remember being, I think it was at the Salvation Army yes. in London. Wasn't it there? Yes. And so I had that opportunity to speak in London. But tonight is the first time that I've ever had an opportunity to speak in St. Wow. Thomas. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's taken over 40 years. Here, what do you mean 40 years? You don't look that old. It would surprise you if you knew my age. People say, well, what's your secret? I say communion. <laughs> communion. Take communion. You're taking life. The life of God every time you take communion. That's a whole sermon in itself. Get the life of God, the blood of Jesus that can heal any disease. Amen. Hallelujah. So here we are. So as I was approaching St. Thomas, I heard the Lord says, I'll meet you on the other side. And I knew what that meant. That from Madison, Ohio, he was going to meet me on this side now. He had met me on the other side. All of those years, but now on this side, he's going to meet me. And I believe that he's going to meet you in this conference yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. The time is now. The time is now. And I'm going to trust God that every speaker, every singer, whoever testifies 
Anyone that has this microphone that God is going to anoint in a very special yes, way. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And that you would realize that the time is now. I have a scripture verse for you. And I'm going to speak on this scripture verse two times. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. <laughs> Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Did you know that he's the redeemer? Yes. Many of us want breakthrough. Many of us want miracles. Many of us want God to move and to do something very special. But he's been whispering to my heart tonight. He says, there are some that are still stuck in the past. You've missed an opportunity. Or there's something that happened to you in the past. And God says, before you can go into your future and get your breakthrough, I want to redeem the time in your life. I want to redeem the time, the lost time, the mistakes, the trials, the setbacks. He is the Redeemer. Satan is the liar. But Jesus is the redeemer. Yes. And my redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. And he is walking throughout Ontario. He is moving in Ontario. He is doing something in Ontario. He is the redeemer. Yes. And there are some that can hear my voice right here sitting here. You need God to come and redeem something. Mm -hmm. You need God to redeem the time of something in your life. Something that you've been stuck in from the past. But besides us, I believe there are several in London, St. Thomas, and Port Stanley. They need redemption. Yes. They need the Redeemer. Mm -hmm. Satan has tried to steal kill and destroy and some of them have focused on the destruction or they focused on the things that didn't go so well and they're so fixated on that that they can't see Jesus standing right there with his arms open wide saying I am your kinsman redeemer yes. I can turn it all around for the good Amen. what was meant for evil by Satan himself I meant it for good Genesis 50 20 I can give you double for your trouble. I can reverse any curse. Ooh, yes. I can give you stars instead of scars. Yes. I can wound any wound that's so deep that you think cannot be healed. I am the healer, says the Lord. I am your redeemer, says the Lord. And I want to bring you into your future, your due season, your due time. But I want to heal some things tonight, says the Lord. I want to redeem the time. Sometimes we face disappointments. And we even question God, why? And we say to the Lord, Lord, what good possibly could you ever bring out of this situation? I'm so disappointed. And you call yourself the Redeemer, but how could you redeem this? But yet the Lord can. A year and a half ago, on February 18th, exactly at 12 midnight, I received a phone call from my father. I remember I was doing some writing. I was sitting at my desk, and I just happened to be up that late. And when I saw my dad's phone, number come up on my cell phone, I knew something was wrong. I picked up the phone, I said, Dad, what's wrong? He said, Steve, your mother just stopped breathing. She's laying on the floor right now. I've tried to give her CPR. I heard the paramedics come in the room. I heard the paramedics hook up the AED. That's at least what, what we call it in America. It's a, it's, yeah, to start your heart. I could hear them doing compressions one after the other. And immediately my heart was breaking. 
I'm like, no, God, no. Please, Lord, don't let her go. She was only 76. Her mother lived into the 80s. And my mother's grandmother lived almost just days away from being 100. And my mother was so special to my heart. She was my closest friend. I would not be standing here today if it was not for my mother. Speaking scripture, praying for me whenever I needed prayer, I could literally feel the prayers of my mother. Wherever I traveled throughout the world, my mom was praying. She would want a text message as soon as I got in the airplane. She'd want a text message as soon as I landed. And I can remember taking long trips, going to several airplanes, and it didn't matter, 24 hours a day, she wanted to know, and she'd always say when I was home, there's no place like home. <laughs> she was praying behind the scenes in the meetings, praying that God would bring breakthrough. She spoke to me when I had no confidence when I was growing up, when others called me stupid and said that I could not learn, when I didn't have any friends, my mother spoke the gospel over me. She said, you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. God loves you with an everlasting love. And I have prayed for you, my son, and you will be a prophet to the nations. She would declare things that I could not see. And through every Big and small thing in my life, my mother was there. My father too, but especially my mom. Nobody could outpray my mother for me. It felt so comforting to know that somebody was praying. When I was 16 years old, I was in the boonies of Africa. So deep in the jungle that you could barely get back there. You had to go in a special vehicle. No hospitals. I almost died on a, on a bamboo cot in Africa, in Zambia, Africa. Oh, wow. I had a temperature that went up to 100, and, well, in, this is American terms, 106, 107, which was, I should be delirious, which I was. And they knew that they were going to lose me. There were no hospitals. There was no helicopters coming for me. Either God was going to heal me or I was going to die. And at that very moment that my life was hanging in the balance, my mother suddenly woke up in the middle of the night all the way back yeah. to Madison, Ohio. She woke up, she got down on her knees, and she prayed for my life to be spared for five hours straight. She knew something was up. And she did not stop praying until the peace of God filled her. And then I was healed. Hallelujah. Wow. My mom's prayers restored me when I needed restoration. My mother's prayers delivered me when I needed deliverance throughout my life. My mother's prayers healed the inward hurts as well as the physical diseases and the things that I had battled. And when finally the paramedic said, we're sorry, and I knew my wife was crying in the other room, and I could hear my dad choking up, but I knew my mother was gone. My heart was broken. I was excited that she was in heaven, that she no longer was in pain. She had a walker. She was in a lot of pain. She had some struggles with her heart. I was happy that she was able to see her father that she had not seen since she was like 21 years old. I was happy that she was in heaven and she was at peace, but I just lost my mom. And I didn't know how I would be able to move on. I remember going into my bedroom and I cried so hard that I felt like I could not cry anymore. I was so brokenhearted that I felt like literally my heart was just shifting inside of my body. It was a pain that was so deep and so hard and I didn't think that I would ever, ever get over it. But when my mom passed away, there was a snowstorm. And I live in New York in the Rochester area, not in Rochester, but in the country. And I drove through a snowstorm and I immediately drove straight back to my dad. 
And it took several hours, and like twice as long, maybe even triple as long to get there because we had to go so slow. But when we got there the following morning and I walked into the house, I clutched onto my father and I told him how much I loved him and I said, Dad, I will not leave you. I am here. And you are going to come home with me. I'll stay here for a few weeks until you feel like you can move, but we're going to move you to New York into our house and we're going to love you for the rest of your days. And my dad was very thankful because he didn't know what he was going to do. He was hard for him to make decisions. If you lost a spouse, you know what I'm talking about. It was hard to make decisions. And my dad came to New York State. When my dad came to New York State, I discovered a father that I never knew. I was close to my dad, but we didn't talk every day. And I never lived with my dad since I was a kid. So here I was, I think I was 50 years old at the time, and I moved out in my 20s. And my dad is now living in our home. And I sat next to my dad in his room. We gave him a nice big room with his own bathroom. And we made, my wife was good at decorating. We gave him a little Hilton suite right in our house. And we spoiled him rotten. We spoiled him so much you couldn't believe it. He kept saying, I can't believe how much you're spoiling me. We tried to make the best of a hurtful situation. And I sat next to my dad. And I remember the Spirit of God coming upon him and he began to prophesy that God was going to do a new thing. That now was due season. That God is going to bring you into the ministry that God has called you to do. He began to shake under an anointing. And he began to encourage me in the dream that I had carried in my heart for years and years and years and years, but I never was able to do. Hallelujah. And that was a dream to be able to have our own facility where we could have conferences and we could start a Bible school. And we didn't have the finances. I was a traveling minister and you're never going to get rich out of being a traveling minister. That's for sure. And God began to speak to us about it. My dad began to prophesy. And the Lord spoke to him and said, you will have a Bible school, and it will be called Oasis Bible Training Center. Just spoke it and declared it. A short time after that, we were speaking in Syracuse, New York, and on our way home, it takes about a couple hours to get, an hour and a half or so to get home, and God speaks to my wife and says, I'm about to give you a building. We said, okay, Lord, we know that you're going to have to give it to us because we certainly can't buy it and we felt we were not to go into debt. About a couple weeks after that, to make a long story short, we had moved to another town where my dad was with us and we started going to a, another Walmart that we seldom ever went to. We just felt drawn to go to this certain city called Newark. We don't know why. We always went to Canandaigua that was a city of the finger lakes. That's where we went to Walmart. That's where we went out to eat. But I felt like there was just a shifting to this other city. And we were at Walmart one day. And I got out of Walmart. And I sat in my car. And the Lord spoke to me. said, pull out your phone. And look up spirit-filled Pentecostal churches. And so I did. And I found two. And so we drove by one of them. The church was called Cornerstone. Little did I know that that church would become like our best friends. That that pastor would be one of the most supportive pastors that I've ever met. I blessed that church as I drove by. And then I went to the second. As I went to the second, we went through all these back roads. I never would have found this in a million years. Only a GPS with an address could have got me it was tucked away in this beautiful neighborhood, and there was this beautiful building up for sale. Big old for sale sign right in it. And we stopped our car, got out, and we began to walk around. We said, well, this place needs a lot of work, but it's for sale. And we called it up, and the realtor said, I'm sorry, but it's under contract. 
And uh, we'll let you know if anything changes. I said, well, if something changes, then you give me a call. And the peace of God that passes all understanding flooded my spirit. It was like I knew something that the realtor did it. And within a couple weeks, the realtor calls me and said, I can't believe this happened. But they were going to knock this church down and they were going to build houses on this lot. And the zoning said, absolutely not. It's going to stay a church. Would you like to see this building? And so I said, yes, I would love to see the building. So there was dad and there was I. We went on the property. As soon as I got on the property with my dad, he began to shake. Glory of God came upon him. He said, Steve, this is it. I said, Dad, we don't have the finances. Either, my dad, you can, I wish you could hear my dad. Either God is in it, he will supply the need. I mean, he's just like, he has the faith of like Abraham, you know. Just, he was just declaring, we were walking around the building. One day we walked around it like 12 times, just walking around declaring that building. The realtor said, well, it costs you know, such and such amount of money. And I said, well, let me talk to our people. Little did they know that we didn't have a lot of people. All of our people were in different churches all over the place. We didn't have a bunch of local people. But you know, you have to fake it till you make it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, just give me a little bit of time. And we began to pray. Every single dad, every single day, dad went with me to that property and he laid his hand on the building and he declared it to be so. I was able to stall like two or three weeks. And finally the realtor called me and said, do you have an answer for me, Steve? Because we just had a full cash offer for this building. And I need to know something. I really would like you guys to have it. But do you have something to tell me? I said, can you give me till tonight? Just give me till tonight. Wow. Well, we had listed it on Facebook. And we prayed. And that's all we could do. The hours began to tick by. Time was going by. Dad sat on his chair with a smile on his face, knowing that God had already spoken. He said, I'm not worried at all. And the last hour before that realtor was going to call me and give it to the other people, suddenly my phone rings. And someone says to me from the other side of the United States, someone I had never even met in person, God spoke to me, Steve. I don't know why we are going to do this, but we're going to buy that building for you. Wow. wow. And I was amazed. So amazed that in another short amount of time that the people of God responded so much so that we were able to totally renovate that entire building, wow. including the parking lot, everything inside. Through miracle after miracle, carpenters showed up. People that we didn't even know existed. We just met. Contractors were too busy for us, but yet God would send his people. And we had our very first conference in there over a year ago, last fall. And I didn't know if anybody would show up, but on the very first conference that we had, it was packed out. We had to put chairs in the aisle. Woo! Look what God has done. Now I tell you this story for one reason. God can redeem anything. I love my mom with all of my heart and I wish that she was still here but yet I know that she's in heaven and she's dancing. And when I was mourning and I was broken suddenly I was overwhelmed with the sense with marching orders from my mom. Wow. That I was to run my race and run it well. That I should not stop, but I should keep on going. Amen. That one day I would hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. 
And that my mom would be standing right there celebrating that I had run my race well. Yes. There was a time to mourn, but there was a time to get back up again and keep on running into kingdom business. Yes. God wanted to redeem everything that was lost. When the Lord took my mother to heaven, he gave me my father and gave me a relationship that I've had with my dad for over a year of him speaking into my life. My dad now, we have a, a, a Sunday night service, we call it Holy Fire, and we didn't know if anybody would come, but on the very first couple, it started packing out. Pastors started coming in from other churches. They stayed in the meeting. There was no competition. There was no jealousy. They came and supported what God was doing. It wasn't meant to be a church. It's meant to be a, a, a conference center or a, a Sunday night fire service where people could come from any church. And people began to come and come and show up. Pastors were coming. They were bringing their churches and bringing their leaders, receiving impartation. And God was moving. And my dad was preaching again. He had retired years ago and he hardly did any preaching. But over the last year, he has preached more over the last year than he did in the previous 25. Hallelujah. God began to use him to be a spiritual father. God was redeeming the time in his life. One day I was sitting with my dad and I said, Dad, do you get it? You thought that God was done with you because you're 83 years old. But there were prophecies that God had spoken over your life that you would be used to do this and that. And now God has redeemed the time. And God is doing something awesome in your midst because you may forget the words that God speaks over you, Dad, but God doesn't forget those prophetic words. He doesn't forget those promises that he has said years and years ago. And now my dad is a spiritual father, even to other pastors. They call him Dad Porter. Wow. Hallelujah. He never thought in a million years that he could ever write a book. He just, we just published his first book. Thank you, Lord. And he thought that would be in one million percent impossibility. He could never, ever do. And we published a book with beautiful pictures. and I wish I would have brought some of them. I brought some books, but I forgot to bring that one. But uh, he was so surprised. And when his sermons, when he speaks, people weep often in the presence of God. And they just love him. There's like, there's like this favor that's resting upon him. And all the young people, and I say young people, that means anybody under 80. <laughs> clings to him because God has raised him up for such a time as this to speak forth the word of God. God redeemed so much in our family. God allowed my wife to see my mother go, allowed me to see my mother go, and my wife was so close to my, my mom. She cried just as hard as I did. Sometimes your in-laws could become just as close as your own parents if you have good ones. But we saw as a couple, God redeem all of that. And we saw the Redeemer begin to move in my dad's life. And now at 83, he has the Caleb anointing. He's getting ready to teach in the Bible school that he helped establish. Our first quarter begins next month and he's teaching a class. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Wow. About five months ago, the doctors did a check on him because he was feeling weak and told him that he has cancer and that he would not be around much longer. Three months ago, he went to see the doctor again and they said that he should call hospice, that he was going to leave very, very soon. And my dad said, is there any chance that this could go into remission? Is there any chance that this could reverse? Uh -huh. And the doctor said, no, no chance. Zero percent chance. Well, people love my dad at Refuge. That's the name of our ministry. 
And I'm telling you, they about rubbed his hair bald by laying hands with anointing oil all the time, praying that his life would be extended. And I remember hearing the story of Hezekiah, how he got an extension on his life. He got seven years. And I began praying for an extension. We took him to the doctors about two months ago, six weeks ago. And the doctor ran a blood test. And he walked in like he just seen a ghost. He said, I can't believe this. But suddenly, your lab work, everything's headed in the other direction now. The same doctor that said he would not improve. Suddenly his lab work began to jump up. Suddenly my dad began to get energy. He, he could barely walk for a little while. And I thought we were going to, you know, I'm going to have to see him go. And I did not want to lose another parent that soon. I was, I'm enjoying this, these moments with my dad. Making memories, going to lunch and breakfast and taking trips. We just went to Maine together where he came from. And I'm loving this opportunity and I'm loving seeing him preach and God using him more so in his last years than even in his former. Hallelujah. Greater will be your latter than your former. Hallelujah. Did you hear me tonight? Greater will be your latter than your former. God is no respect of persons. What he did for Wayne Porter, he can do for you. He can redeem the time. What you felt, maybe you're just like me. You went through something in your life that was so painful and so hard that you felt you'd never get over it. God can suddenly bring a beautiful rose garden out of what you thought was a dark, stinky garden. Suddenly, resurrection power comes into the garden. Yeah. Suddenly, things begin to sprout once again. Suddenly, there's dew on the roses one more time. Suddenly, God breathes on what you thought was dead. Due season is now yours. Hallelujah. You think that God can't do it? Yes, he can. He can turn it all around for the good. I know that God spoke to me about tonight that there are some that are here that have lost time. They have made some mistakes in their life and they think that God can't redeem those mistakes. There's some that may be hearing this message and you always point to that one spot or that two spots, something that happened, maybe it was a decade ago, maybe something that you did wrong and you think that God could never redeem that. He wants to redeem that and turn that curse right around. He wants to speak life over you. And what was meant for your destruction, God will use it. Often we go through hard times. Sometimes we cause those hard times and sometimes we don't cause those hard times. But God will use all of it yes. to create something beautiful in your life. The most beautiful people that I have ever met. Do you know what I mean by that? That beautiful heart. Mm -hmm. Those beautiful people went through something. Mm -hmm. Beauty doesn't just happen accidentally. The most tender-hearted, most beautiful people went through pain. Yes. There was a very famous teacher. His name was John Wright Follett. Probably have never heard of him. He passed away in the 50s. But he said something. He said, people will see the signs and the wonders. They will see the blessing. They'll see the anointing. They'll see the miracles. They'll see the breakthroughs. But what they don't see is the pain, the darkness, the hurt, the agony, the defeats, and the tears, and all of these things. But through all of the brokenness, God will work it all around for your good. He'll create in you a beautiful heart. He'll make you a beautiful bride that has a sweet aroma that comes from your life. 
He'll turn it around and give you a testimony from the long tests that you went through. He'll make you victorious because you refuse to be a victim. Hallelujah. I could have stayed in that place of mourning. And I know that there's some people that get stuck in mourning and they never get over it. Am I over my mother? No, I'm not over my mom. But this one thing I know, she's waiting for me. She's in the great cloud of witnesses. And she's cheering me on. She's saying, run, Steve, run. Run that race. And while I still have time left on this earth, I'm going to run my race and I'm going to run it well. And I'm going to see God bring me into due season because I refuse to give up. I refuse to faint. I know that due season is coming. And I have the sense that due season is coming your way. If you'll believe that God is reaching out his hand to touch you where you're hurt, where you have pain and agony and rejection and abandonment, all of those things, the Lord says, I will turn it all around for your good. I am the Redeemer. And I will redeem the time. Hallelujah. I will redeem the time. But Lord, I wasted so much time. The Lord says, I will redeem the time. But Lord, I think my plane has already come and gone. I'll send another plane. Yes. But Lord, I really made some bad, bad mistakes. A righteous man falls seven times and gets back up again and keeps on going. A righteous man will forget those things which are behind and press on toward those things which are before. you got to leave the past in the past. Satan will try to use your past to kill, steal, and destroy. But God says, I'm going to restore all that the locust has eaten. Now is your time. Now is your season. I'm about to do something beautiful from the chaos. I'm about to do something supernatural from what you thought was a defeat. He is the God of restoration. And he can restore it all. But the great liar like a slithering snake will try to come into your garden and he'll tell you it's too late for you. Oh, you should never have made that mistake. You have lost time. Mm. You'll never get another chance. God's mad at you. You're too old now. No. Those are all lies. Somebody needs to trust God tonight for the Hezekiah anointing, yes. an extension of their days, because you still have dreams in your heart that you have not seen. Somebody needs to declare the Caleb anointing, that the fire of God would once again be placed upon you, that you would go and do something that you thought Amen. you couldn't do. Told my my mom, I could remember the last year of her life, it was difficult for her. She had a walker, she'd get out of breath. She actually needed to have a surgery, but because of COVID, she could never get into that operating table and all of those things. If they would have gotten her in, maybe she still would have been here, but they couldn't. And I knew that we could lose her at some point in the future. I didn't know for sure. And I remember her and I having a conversation and she said, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm up there in years what I could really do for the Lord. And suddenly I got a word of knowledge. I said, Mom, God has made you a prayer warrior. And I see you getting in your car because she loved to take drives. I see you getting in your car and going to certain cities around the area. Maybe some will be a drive an hour away or whatever. And I see you going into these cities and I see you sitting on a park bench or sitting somewhere in the city, and I see you praying and declaring revival over those cities. And I had written uh, many tracks during COVID. That's what we did. We wrote tracks. I couldn't go anywhere, so I wrote books and tracks. And I gave my mom some of my tracks, and she put them in a Ziploc bag, and she brought them with her. And I said, Mom, when you go to bathrooms, put a track there. And maybe you can't preach a sermon right now, but put a track there. She was very tired toward the end. After she passed away, I had to go through all of 
my mom and my dad's things. And when we were in her car, I looked in the back, and there was this little basket that she had with a Ziploc bag with tracks yeah. in it. I knew that that's exactly what she was doing. She took that word, that word of knowledge that the Lord gave me to heart, and she began to go to different cities and she would pray. And I believe all of the years of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. She was a pastor's wife in her younger years where she led all kinds of stuff and did lots of things. But I believe that God will look over her life from the beginning, even at the very end of her life, and see her when she wasn't feeling good, get into her car and driving to Walmart and sitting there and praying for revival over people. And God will say to her, I believe he already has, well done, thou good and faithful servant, my daughter. Now she's joined that cloud of witnesses and she's cheering me on. Do you realize that's like jet fuel in my tank? Amen. I went from depressed. There were times that I felt like, Lord, if you want to take me to heaven now, I'll just go. Sometimes you miss that one so much, you just want to go to heaven too. But now, I don't want to go to heaven yet. I want to go to heaven. Yes, I want to see my mom. I want to see Jesus face to face. But I got a work to do. I got a job to do. We got a Bible school to run and revival services to host. We have conferences to have, lives to be changed. I'm not going to rust out. I want the fire of God to continue to flow through me till I take my very last breath or till the trumpet blows and I go to be with the rest of the saints. Hallelujah. Occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. Are we willing to occupy? Are we going to fixate on the past? Tonight, I believe that there is going to be redemption. That your redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 7 verse 31 says this world passes away. Oh yes it does. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There's a time for everything. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. And now is your time to enter into your promise, my friends. There is a purpose and there is a destiny on those that are sitting here right now. God has a prayer for you. Go forth into all the world and accomplish what he's called you to do. He has a tailor fit plan just for you. But you're like, all those preachers are gonna get the big rewards. No, 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 no. It's not much done, it's well done. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could give you a whole message oh, on that. Yes. Do you understand what I just said? It's not much done, it's well done. When you do what God has given you to do, even if that means cleaning up tissues that people leave behind at the altar, you will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Sometimes I believe, and I don't say this to be critical, but when we walk through the streets of glory, we're going to be surprised who has the greatest authority and the biggest rewards. It probably won't be the biggest preachers of our day. It's going to be that faithful saint that have prayed all those years. It's going to be the church janitor that, that cleaned and never complained. It's going to be that one that goes into the nursing homes for years and years. Decades my mom and dad went into the nursing homes and visited people and sang and preached and loved. Great will be their reward. It's not much done. It's well done. Let me encourage you one more time redeeming the time because the days are evil. The Redeemer is here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're on a journey together. Yes. Oh yes we are. We're on a journey together and we're going to walk into signs and wonders and miracles but tonight the Lord says I can't leave you the way you are. I got to deal with some stuff from the past. 
I got to redeem the time in your life. I got to redeem those things that you thought that could not be redeemed. I'm going to turn it all around for your good. Somebody tonight is going to receive hope. Amen. Somebody tonight, you're going to start to dream again. Do not make plans to move out of this lifetime and to heaven yet. Say, Lord, when you come and get me, praise God, I'll be ready. It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Whenever my appointed day comes, I thank you, Jesus. But I'm not going to fixate on that appointed day. I'm going to run my race well. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to run my race well. Would you close your eyes? Would you play something? Yes. I won't keep you here all night because I know that we have a long conference ahead of us that I cannot wait to dive into. But I just had this sense tonight that I had the right word at the right time, the right season. Yeah. That there's some that are here tonight who have missed some opportunities. You've had some pretty awful things happen to you that you just don't understand. And the Lord says you will get your question answered when I see you face to face. Hallelujah. You don't have to have all your questions answered right now on this earth. Just trust him. Just take the hand of the sweet master and trust him. And the Lord wants to whisper in your ear tonight, I am your redeemer. I am your kinsman redeemer. I want to redeem the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord, for my precious brothers and sisters that have gathered here in St. Thomas, Ontario tonight. There's no place that I would rather be than right here, right now. And I ask you, Lord, right now that you would touch every heart and every life. If there are those here tonight that just need a little healing touch from the Lord because of something that may have happened in the past, or they can just identify with something that was said in this message, Lord, would you touch their hearts right now? I pray that they would feel the fire of God beginning to burn on the inside of them because the great Redeemer is drawing nigh. Hallelujah. If you're in this place and you would like special prayer, I want you to see the front of this church as the Holy of Holies. It's not something to be like, oh my, I don't want to walk up there because that, everyone will think I'm a horrible person. No, just the contrary. You're going to get up and you're going to leave behind the old. And you're going to walk up here and become a part of the new. I'm not going to keep you up here long, but I would love to just say a short prayer over anyone that wants special prayer because they were touched in their heart of something that was said tonight. And maybe you need the Redeemer to come and to redeem some things in your life. Or perhaps you believe the lie of the enemy that it was over with for you. And I'm here to tell you tonight that your best days are ahead of you, not behind. The Lord's not going to take you out of this life of defeat or status quo. He's going to take you out as a conquering overcomer. Hallelujah. Whoever would like special prayer, just come out of your seats even now. I'm just going to pray briefly with each person. I'm not going to keep you here long. But I would like to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're on this journey together. And I can't wait to get until tomorrow when I'm able to share with you again the, the conclusion of this message on redeeming. But tonight we're getting down to business. Hallelujah. We're getting down to business. 
so that we can become all that he has called us to do. If anyone feels led to get behind any of these or if you want to just stretch your, your hands toward them, just going to pray briefly in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for my sister. My precious sister, Lord, redeem the time. I thank you that her best days are ahead. That she's more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Touch. Fresh fire. job to do. Pray that you would speak to her exactly what it is. That you would use her, Lord, mightily. Hallelujah. Redeem anything that needs redemption in her life. In the name of Jesus. Fresh fire, I pray in the name of Jesus. Fresh touch, redeemer, come and redeem. Anything that's been lost, Lord, redeem it in Jesus' name. Turn it all around for the good. For behold, you make all things new. You make all things new. In the name of Jesus, restore. Restore in the name of Jesus. Restore. I pray, Father, that he would feel light after he leaves this place tonight, that anything that he has carried from the past, Lord, I think he was falling off of him in the name of Jesus. That the Redeemer is in the house. Hallelujah. That the Redeemer is in the house. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, bless you. Bless you. Redeem all Redeem all, Lord. Whatever the locust has eaten, give it to her. Give it back to her a hundredfold. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that her plane is coming around once again. The plane of opportunity is coming in Jesus' name. She's not finished. You are just getting started. She has a maturity now and a wisdom that she didn't have before. And I thank you that she's going to impart that to others in the name of Jesus. Let her impart that motherly wisdom to young ladies, I pray in Jesus' name. Restore in the name of Jesus. Restore. Restore. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Restore. Restore.
her call and give her all the tools that she needs to fulfill the call of God on her life. Redeemer, come and redeem anything from the past, anything that would try to slow down that race. I thank you, Lord, that nothing would be able to stop what the Father is doing in Jesus' name. Redeem in the name of Jesus. Redeem. Redeem, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Power. Anointing. Presence. Glory. She's a glory carrier. You're redeeming all that Satan has tried to steal and take. We put a restraint order against the enemy. And we tell him he needs to cough it up. Hallelujah. My sister's taking back everything that Satan has stolen from her. She's a warrior, a champion, an intercessor. Bride warrior for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. She has combat boots. We're waiting her marching orders and she'll fulfill the plan of God. When she puts her mind to do something, she'll do it. Nothing will stop her and nobody will change her mind. And I thank you, Father, that she has her sight set. Hallelujah. On that which is before her. Marching orders are coming in Jesus' name. Marching orders are coming in Jesus' name. Open the ears to hear in Jesus' name. Open the heart to receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Touch. Pray for fresh fire, fresh encouragement, fresh wind, fresh oil. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Fresh breath of God, come and blow and redeem all. Redeemer, come and embrace her now. Embrace your daughter, I pray. Hold her tight. Whisper in her ears that you have a purpose and a place, a destiny program that she and her life would follow. We thank you for it, Lord. Make it clear. Give her ears to hear, eyes to see. Stop everything that's not of the Lord that would try to get her off the path. In the name of Jesus, no detours. We thank you. She's going to run her race around. The great cloud of witnesses, those that she knows that are in heaven, are cheering her on, telling her, run, 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 run. Time is short. Redeem the time. Time is short. Redeem the time. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell us. New ideas coming. New purposes. New plans. New ministry. I just hear the word new, 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 new. Something new is on the horizon. Hallelujah. Redeem. And give her more than enough. Not just enough. Not enough. More than enough in Jesus' name. Run it over in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Redeem, 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 redeem. In the name of Jesus. Redeem in the name of Jesus. Touch. Let this weekend cause her to be filled to overflowing. Not a half a cup. Overflowing. Her cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. 
the only number of your days that matters is what God has to say. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord say you still have a work to do. Press on toward the mark of the high calling. Know your bridegroom. Know your sweet Jesus. For I will whisper to your heart to the midnight hour and surely you'll carry those whispers to those that cannot hear. For he'll send you to the hard places and you will whisper. And as you whisper, the heart of God breakthrough will happen. For I have called you and I want to use your mouth, says the Lord. And I will fill you to overflowing. And during this conference, your cup will runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Not some of the days. Not yesterday. All the days. All the way to the finish line. And you're not there yet. Hallelujah. So run. In fact, the Lord says I'm placing fuel that you are not even aware of. You will have a, a new vitality and a, a new boldness and fresh courage. Your spirit will burn like it's not burned before. And I will use you. I have need of you, says the Lord. I have need of you. Will you be my vessel? A vessel of honor. Fit. Ah. The Lord says fit. You are fit. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. He's not handicapped but what you call a handicap. Who made your mouth? Who created your hands? Certainly I have, says the Lord. For I will lead you and guide you. I will be that light into your path and a lamp into your feet. And I will give you special assignments that only you can fulfill. You cannot say any longer while someone else can do it. The Lord says, I have need of you. Occupy. Occupy. That word occupy is going to be explosive in your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Touch. Touch. Redeem. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Sweet Redeemer. Come and redeem. Do your thing. Let my sister's redemption draw nigh. King Jesus, come. King Jesus, come. In the name of Jesus. Redeem, redeem, redeem the time. Redeem, redeem, redeem. Anything lost, redeem. Give her back double. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Is there anyone else that I forgot? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Fire shut up in his bones. Fire shut up in his bones. You even thought, me? Could this happen for me? And the Lord says, yes. <laughs> yes, I have no respect to persons. And I'm causing there to be rain that comes from heaven and fire shut up in your bones as a sign and a wonder that I'm at work within you. Hallelujah. Throughout this conference, your hands will burn and so will your heart. In the name of Jesus. For I declare over you, I have need of you. And you will be my vessel. And I'm not limited because you limit yourself. Hallelujah. Limitless. Hallelujah. I hear that word, limitless. It's a future conference, limitless. 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 You are limitless. 
Because I, I can do all through you. I can give you strength. Would you trade your weakness for my strength? Would you remove the garments of the past and put on a robe of righteousness through my shed blood? I see the Lord handing like a Olympian would take a, a torch from a runner and, and go further. The Lord says you're going further. He's handing you a torch. You have a fresh commission. There's new marching orders for you too. I, the second time I heard those words tonight, marching orders. He has marching orders. You even sent me and the Lord says you. You. You say, why? Because I'll get the glory. And you'll give it to me. You won't walk around like a peacock. You'll be a humble one. Giving him the glory. So the Lord says, I'm going to wake you up in the night and I'm going to whisper to you. You're to keep a notebook by your bed. There'll be times that you'll wake up. There'll be times throughout the day that he's going to interrupt you. And you're going to write things down. I don't know if they're prayer requests to pray and intercede for or if they're just marching orders, but I see you writing things down. I see the Lord giving you strategies. And these strategies are going to be interesting to certain people. They'll go, oh, interesting. But they're divine keys that are going to unlock the kingdom. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray for an extension of life for my dear sister. Healing in her body in the name of Jesus. For she is a spiritual mother to the motherless. There is much for her to do from the Bible school to more conferences. Yes. Uh -huh. And the enemy would desire for her to just retire. But I thank you during this conference, she is going to refire. Yes. Hallelujah. That goodness and mercy will follow her all the days of her life. That you are leading her. I thank you, Lord, that you want to speak to her about vision. And I see her with a pencil and an eraser. And there's going to be some things that you're going to erase. Things that you thought that you would do. And the Lord says, I have a better plan. And he's going to give you specifics on how to do certain things. There have been some things that you have thought about doing, but it's like I see blanks, like missing information, missing things. And it hasn't quite come together. And the, the Lord says, it's going to come together, my plan for you. There's no confusion in his plans and purposes. And I thank you, Father. I pray that you would use her voice. Oh, the body of Christ needs her. The wisdom. And she's been to the battle. And she's been to the pain. She's wept. Her pillow was wet with tears. I hear her crying out, oh God. You're going to give her a double anointing. Signs and wonders, miracles, healings. You're giving her divine strategies. You're editing and adding to the vision. 
And she's going to know in her knower, yes, this is it. Or we need to change directions slightly. We need to try this instead of that. She's going to know. And I thank you, Father, that signs and wonders are going to follow. I thank you, Lord, for her obedience all these years. There were times when she could not see the reward, but you have taken notice. And there are people throughout her life in heaven that have been cheering her on. The great cloud of witnesses anticipates. What is she going to do today? And in this conference, she is going to refire. Healing virtue flow to her body. In the name of Jesus. Let it be. For I decree and I declare the promises of God. Until it's your day to take her home, we pray that she would fulfill all, not some, all of the promises of God. Even those prophetic words that she tucked away and hasn't thought about for some time. Those words that she put on the shelf, Lord, bring them off the shelf. Remind her of those words and let her thank you that once again those words are going to come to pass. Even some of those words that she forgot about, I thank you that you have not forgotten. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name.